So we are going to prove that the determinant of e to the a equals e to the trace of a, where a is any matrix. To start, let's talk about what e to the a means when a is a matrix. The way that we define this exponential function e to the a is using the infinite sum formula for the exponential. So e to the a will equal 1 plus a plus a squared over 2 factorial plus a cubed over 3 factorial plus a to the fourth over 4 factorial and so on to infinity. And using this formula, we can derive the results that we need regarding the determinant and the trace. Now it's a little difficult to prove this result if a is an arbitrary matrix, but it turns out that it's a lot easier to prove if A is an upper triangular matrix. So the first question to ask is, can we convert this problem, where A is any matrix we're looking at, to a problem where A has to be upper triangular? And the way that we do that is with the Jordan canonical form. So when we're looking at matrices over the complex numbers, the Jordan canonical form says that we can write any matrix A as P times J times P inverse. And in this case, P is just any matrix, and J is a matrix that's in Jordan canonical form. Now the details of Jordan canonical form aren't really important to us, but the important thing is that J is upper triangular. So in other words, we can always write our matrix A as P, J, P inverse, and we can guarantee that J in this expression is upper triangular. So if we can prove that this result is true for this J being upper triangular, how can we recover the result for an arbitrary matrix A given this equation A equals P, J, P inverse? Well, in order to figure that out, let's take a look at the form of E to the A. We saw up here that it's 1 plus a plus a squared over 2 factorial plus a cubed over 3 factorial and so on. What we can do is substitute p, j, p inverse in for all of these a's. So the equation will become 1 plus p, j, p inverse plus, and then here, we're looking at a squared. So in other words, p, j, p inverse squared. Well, let's write out what this means, because of course, when we square PJP inverse, that just means we're multiplying it by itself. So we have PJP inverse times PJP inverse. If you look right here, P inverse P, these two are right next to each other, so those are going to cancel out. That will just be the identity matrix, and then that won't affect the product, because the identity doesn't do anything. So we're left with PJ times JP inverse. So if we multiply these two j's together, we're going to get p j squared p inverse. So p j p inverse squared, we can basically take this 2 and then just put it above the j. And we can do the exact same thing with any exponent. If we multiply this 3 times, then we're going to get p j p inverse p j p inverse p j p inverse. And so the p inverse p here will cancel and then the p inverse p here will also cancel. And so we'll get p times j, 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 and then a p inverse at the end. And that will leave us with p, j cubed, p inverse. We can do that for any exponent. So when we're looking at a squared, a cubed, a to the fourth, and so on, we can actually simplify those expressions a lot. Because this will be a squared over 2 factorial, that's p, j squared, p inverse over 2 factorial, a cubed over 3 factorial, that's p j cubed, p inverse over 3 factorial, and so on. Now here is the key. In all of these terms, we have a p on the left, and we have a p inverse on the right. These 2 factorial, 3 factorial, and so on, those are just constants, so it doesn't really matter where they show up in the product, we can always factor those out. So p on the left and a p inverse on the right. Because that p and p inverse is happening in every term, we can factor it out of the entire sum. And even this 1, which is the identity matrix when we're looking at matrices, we can write the identity matrix as p times p inverse. And so we can factor that out from the left and the right as well. So this equals p times 
one plus j plus j squared over two factorial plus j cubed over three factorial and so on times p inverse. And what is this on the inside? One plus j plus j squared over two factorial plus j cubed over three factorial. This is just the formula for e to the j. This is the matrix exponential. So what we just proved is that if a equals pjp inverse, then e to the a equals p times e to the j times p inverse. So now we return to our original question, which is what is the determinant of e to the a? Well, the determinant of e to the a, we can substitute in this, which we know equals e to the a. So we're looking at the determinant of p times e to the j times p inverse. But remember, the determinant is multiplicative. So in other words, we can write the determinant of p times e to the j times p inverse as the determinant of p times the determinant of e to the j times the determinant of p inverse. And the determinant of p inverse will always be 1 over the determinant of p. So these are all just numbers. We can cancel these out. And we're left with just the determinant of e to the j. So if a equals pjp inverse, then the determinant of e to the a equals the determinant of e to the j. Now the other thing we need to know for this equation is the trace of a. But one of the key properties of the trace of a matrix is that the trace of xy equals the trace of yx. So in other words, if we're multiplying two matrices and taking the trace, it doesn't matter what order we put them in the product. So if we look at the trace of PJP inverse, we can order these however we want. So in particular, in this equation, let's say that X is P and Y is JP inverse. Well then, trace of YX is going to be the trace of j p inverse p. And so p inverse p will cancel out, and that's just going to leave us with the trace of j. So the trace of a, which is p j p inverse, is equal to the trace of j. So let's wrap up this section. Our goal was to prove that it's enough to prove this equation for upper triangular matrices. The way we started is by saying that every matrix has a Jordan canonical form, which means we can write an arbitrary matrix as PJP inverse where J is upper triangular. So we want to assume that this equation is satisfied for the upper triangular matrix and then prove that it holds for A. We want to prove this equation. We know that the determinant of E to the A equals the determinant of E to the J. And we know that trace of A is equal to the trace of J. So this equation up here, determinant of E to the A equals E to the trace A, that's the same equation as the determinant of E to the J equals E to the trace of J. So if we can prove the result for upper triangular matrices, that's this J here, then we know it holds for any matrix we want. So now we know that it's enough to prove the result only for upper triangular matrices. And that means that for the rest of the proof, we can assume that A is upper triangular. And that's going to make this computation a lot easier. So if A is upper triangular, what do we know about A, A squared, A cubed, A to the fourth, A to the fifth, and so on? Well, I proved in a previous video, you can check the link in the description, that the product of two upper triangular matrices is also upper triangular. So a squared is a times a. Well, a and a are both upper triangular. So this product will also be upper triangular. a cubed is a squared times a. a squared is upper triangular, so is a. So this is upper triangular as well. And that's going to hold for all the rest of the terms in the sum. This is a sum of upper triangular matrices. And the identity matrix here is also upper triangular. So this result 
will be upper triangular. Now the reason it's nice that e to the a is upper triangular is that computing the determinant of an upper triangular matrix is actually very easy. So if we take a look at the matrix here, we want to compute the determinant. We can do that using cofactor expansion. So let's expand it along this first column. What we get is a times this lower right two by two matrix, which is B star zero C. And then we're going to add two more terms, but both of them will have a zero in the front multiplied onto that matrix. So those whole things will just be zero. We can ignore them. We're just left with A times the determinant of this matrix. Well, we can do cofactor expansion again. Should be a determinant here. We can do cofactor expansion again, this time using the first column again. We're going to get A times B times the determinant of this lower right one by one matrix, which is just C. And then the second term in that expansion will have a zero in the front. So that whole thing is zero. We can ignore it. And of course, the determinant of C is just C. So by continually doing cofactor expansion on the first column, we can prove that the determinant of an upper triangular matrix is just the product of the entries on the diagonal. So now we want to find the determinant of E to the A. All we need to do is figure out what are the diagonal entries of this matrix. Now here the video I did on upper triangular matrices link in the description will come in handy one more time because in that video I proved that when we multiply two upper triangular matrices, the diagonal entries of the product are just obtained by multiplying the diagonal entries in each factor. So as an example, let's take a look at A squared. A and A are both upper triangular. So if we want to find the diagonal entries of A squared, let's say we want row R and column R. The way that we get this is just looking at entry RR in both of the factors. So in this case, both of the factors are A. So the R the diagonal entry is just A sub RR times A sub RR, or in other words, A sub RR squared. And if we look at A cubed, we're going to get A squared sub RR times A sub RR. So we'll get A sub RR cubed. And that's going to hold for the rest of the terms in the sum. Anytime we're looking at the diagonal entries of A to the N, that will just be the diagonal entry of the original matrix A raised to the power of N. So if we want the rth diagonal entry of the matrix E to the A, that's going to be E to the A sub RR. The way we do that is by taking this entry in each of the terms of the sum. So we want the RR diagonal entry of the identity matrix plus that entry on A plus the entry on A squared, which we know is ARR squared over two factorial, ARR cubed over three factorial, and so on. And here, this A sub RR is just a number. It's a matrix entry. So this one plus A plus A squared over two factorial plus A cubed over three factorial. Again, that's just the formula for the exponential. So we're going to get the result e to the power of a sub rr. So the diagonal entries of this matrix exponential are just e to the power of the diagonal entries of a. Now we want to find the determinant. I said before that the determinant of an upper triangular matrix, this is upper triangular, the determinant is just the product of the diagonal entries. And now we know that the diagonal entries are e to the a sub 1, 1, e to the a sub 2, 2, e to the a sub 3, 3, and so on. So all in all, the determinant of e to the a is just the product from i equals 1 to n of e to the a sub i i. And here n is just the size of the matrix a, so how many rows and how many columns it has. So now we've computed the value of the determinant of e to the a. It's just this product of e to the power of the diagonal entries of the original matrix A. Now we just need to look at e to the power of trace of A. So how can we compute that? Well, 
The trace of a matrix actually is a very easy explicit formula in terms of the entries of the matrix A. Because the trace of a matrix is just the sum of all of the diagonal entries. So in this case, the diagonal entries of A are A sub II. So the trace of A is the sum from I equals 1 to N of A sub II. And now take a look. We want to compare the determinant of E to the A versus E to the trace of A. With these two equations, what we're comparing is the product of E to the A sub II versus E to the sum of A sub II. So are those equal? Well, the answer is yes, and you might recognize this formula as e to the x times e to the y equals e to the x plus y. Notice right here, we're taking the product of e to the power of some numbers, and then over here, we're taking e to the power of the sum of those numbers. And so this equation, determinant of e to the a, equals e to the trace of a is really just saying that e to the x times e to the y equals e to the x plus y. So that's how we prove that the determinant of e to the a equals e to the trace of a for any matrix A. First, we reduce to the upper triangular case using the Jordan canonical form. From there, we use the fact that the Jordan canonical form is upper triangular to prove that the determinant of e to the a is just the product of e to the diagonal entries of the original matrix A. And e to the trace of a, of course, is just e to the sum of those diagonal entries. From there, comparing these two, we're looking at the product of e to the x versus e to the sum of x. And the reason those two are equal is that e to the x times e to the y equals e to the x plus y. And understanding this proof, actually makes this original equation pretty easy to remember because the determinant is an operation that's concerned with multiplying things and the trace is concerned with adding things. So this expression on the left really looks like e to the x times e to the y and this expression on the right really looks like e to the x plus y. So that's how we prove this equation and it's also how we can remember it.